Welcome back to Bull Sessions here on 680 KFEQ. You can email your questions or comments to bull at willcross.net. Once again, here's Randy Baker and agronomist Brad Law. Brad, we're back again with Bull Sessions. Um, We was talking about your list, and that was a good list of why dogs are better than cats. I know. I I put a lot of time into that. You did. And those were some heartfelt deals of why (laughs) I like my dog better than the cat. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, you know, in our... This second segment here, here in a little bit, we're going to be talking to uh, Brian Burnell from Danville, Indiana, on pattern tiling. Yes, yes. He's really into Big the deal. pattern tiling. and Big deal. Uh, You know, one thing we ought to mention. Focus on the farmer. It's coming yes. up. we still got that to do yet. Well, and we, we've got a good one for that. <clears throat> we do. I mean. Awesome. Somebody that really has put in extra time and effort. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we've And a got, lot of farmers do that. Yes. And one other thing, we've got a little, uh, oh, traveling going on. I'm going uh-huh. to be going to the Nebraska Power Farm Show. Yeah. That's we're, coming uh, up. About to wrap up harvest here, so farm shows are coming at us everywhere. The farm show season will take off December 6th to 8th in Lincoln, Nebraska, mm-hmm. is the Nebraska Power Farm Show. Yep. I believe that was the second largest indoor farm show. Yes, I believe it is. Second or third, one of them. So I think it's I think second, it's second. And then Des Moines is third. Yeah. But uh, it's there in Lincoln, Nebraska at the Lancaster Event Center. Mm-hmm. That was December 6th to December the 8th. There around uh, noon, I believe, on the 6th, I'm going to be hosting a seminar session. You? What are you going to talk about? Well, I'm going to talk about... Man- Why dogs are better than cats. <laughs> well, I, I <clears throat> might use a list or something. Uh-huh. But uh-huh. Uh, we're going to talk about weeds and managing weeds and stuff. And Oh, uh, do you have weeds? Everybody manages weeds, whether you're in Missouri. I don't. Did you see mine? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. 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 Maybe I need to be first in... At the the seminar you're well, teaching. Well, you know, sometimes people are a lost cause and you got to move on. I know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but uh, we go uh, on and uh, let's look. Oh, we've got some music. What are you and Miles up to now? Well, we've got some. See, isn't this some groovy music, Randy? We're not doing a country song this week. I, I know. Do you, Do you remember uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers? No. I remember the name. See, it's relevant. Oh, you're tying Brian from Indiana in with this song yeah. somehow. Indiana Boys on the Indiana Nights. Why do you and Miles always do these things behind my back? Speaking of managing <laughs> weeds, that's uh, yeah. Mary Jane's last day. Huh? That is, yes, one of them <clears throat> evil songs. Yeah, well, but... This to, is why you two plot when I was out there well, talking with Gary a while ago. You do these things behind my back. Well, we were just trying to get into this. But, uh, okay, uh, I get We've it. got Brian here from Indiana, and I'm going to be talking about weeds. Mm-hmm. And whether you're in Indiana, whether you're in Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri, everywhere... Always something fun to talk about is weeds because I despise weeds. I do too. So, and but, you know what else I despise is people who forget to set the timer clock. <laughs> well, is that not the only job you have to do in here and you did not do it? I'm sitting here looking at nothing but zeros. Now, I don't know where we are in this segment, Bradley. You just got to go with it. I'll go with hey, it. Let's see if we can get Brian on the phone. Okay. Brian, are you there? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Hi, yes. Brian. <laughs> Welcome to uh, our show. Thank you very much, guys. I'm excited to be on. Well, good. All right. Now, uh, uh, we were going through, and uh, I remember last fall, you uh, pattern tiled a farm, which that doesn't happen, like, hardly at all around here. I mean, we put in terrace tiles and some hick and bottoms for drainers and risers and stuff, but... Your land lays a little flatter than ours in general, and you guys pattern tile is kind of like a hobby almost in the winter time or in the fall after you're done uh, picking corn and in the spring before you uh, um, when you're not uh, it's too it's dry but it's too early to plant. Um, on your uh, pattern tiling, what uh, you know? Why did you pattern tile your farm? Well, the, the the bigger farm that I pattern tiled last fall, I did uh, 
I did two farms. One of them, I did about a third of it. And that's a farm that a family member of mine owns that I really have intentions of farming for a good little while, barring any unforeseen mm-hmm. circumstances. But the other larger farm that I tiled is a farm that my wife and I bought in, uh, let's see, that would have been 20, I think it was the winter of 2013. So it took okay. a couple years to kind of figure out what it needed. And um, after that couple years, I just kind of threw the kitchen sink at it. And we started all from scratch and uh, put in a new main and uh, went ahead and pattern tiled it. Now, when you say you pattern tiled it, you, you're spacing out basically drawing uh, rectangle squares with tile lines across the field. And uh, how yep. do you decide on what spacing you would go with for that farm? In, in, in all reality, number one factor that's going to come into play is, is obviously going to be the cost. That's always that a big deal. Kind of your expected longevity on the farm. You know, is this a farm that, that we own? Mm-hmm. Are we not 70 years old? Are we going to get to enjoy this for a long time? Um, or is it a farm that we basically don't have the money to do? So are we going to kind of do a, lot, a wider spacing this time, and maybe we'll come back here in four or five years, and hopefully we have the money to split those and get it in better shape then. Um, like I said, those available funds and just the, your realistic longevity on the farm, whether that be something that you own that you know you're going to farm forever, or maybe it be something that you have a five- or a ten-year contract on. Brad, can I ask you something stupid? <laughs> I I know Brad. <laughs> Good job, man. Brian. Uh, yeah, you can be this on the show always. This is the always. Dig Randy show, okay? No. And I've been nice to him today, so. <laughs> Brian, explain to me a little bit more, if you would, what is pattern tiling exactly? So so what we're doing is, is we're going to basically cover the entire farm, or or that's your hopes with pattern tiling and here again, what would stop you from doing that? It would be running out of available right. funds. But what we're doing is we're trying to control the air, oxygen, to mm-hmm. soil ratio. And I'm not smart enough to know exactly what that ratio should be. But on the other side of that, it's never going to be perfect because when you're dealing with Mother Nature and right. somebody like myself who doesn't have irrigation, you can't just go out and turn on a switch and make it right. But right. that's basically what we're doing. We're trying to draw down the water table of the entire farm uh-huh. and try to get your roots to grow, go down deeper to grow towards the moisture. All right. um, around your guys' as parts, I would guess yeah. Now, on a typical year, we would get more rain than you guys would get. But I want to add something that in the drought of 2012, mm-hmm. my pattern tiled farms were still my top producing farms. Really? Uh huh. So, you know, we've got like a lot said, of hill ground that, here. Uh, there's a lot of bottoms too, but is this primarily for a bottom or hills? Do you pattern tile in hill ground? Sometime in hills, you know, if you've got a a hillside seep, running a tile of that, I think would be very, uh, very in your, you know, profitable, very, very good idea. Uh huh. No. Um, and, and, and you know, really, where, where you're going to start off with is uh, is tiling your your bottoms, your lower ground, and then kind of going from there. Especially somebody who's never done it before, you're not going to dive into it head first, but um, you know. Just basically going into it with the idea of, of trying to get the farm uniform in its ability to dry out. Of course, your hills are probably going to dry out quicker than your low ground does. Well, let's sure. try and make them dry out at the same time. Well, no. and like I've noticed there, I've got some <laughs> small spots that uh, there's a little flat spot. I one place at my farm that there were no beans. It was mm-hmm. just about as big as this root, this little studio we're in, but... That little spot there produced zero, absolutely too nothing. Wet. It was too wet. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, it's not 200 feet to the ditch. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, 200 feet of four-inch tile, if you trench that in yourself, wouldn't be a big deal, but it would fix that area and maybe even take that spot that 
um, Mm -hmm. necessarily went at zero. And then the spots around it that were dinged because of it and maybe bring them up and maybe make that other spot break even. Brian, what would be in a situation like that? What would be what depth would you set? Would you put the tile in? Or what is a, is there a standard depth or what is that? Now, this may vary according to soil types. Um, okay. So I'd hate to say this for sure out there in your guys' neck of the woods. But for me, if I could put in all my tile perfectly, it'd be in that 30 to 32 inch deep range. Mm-hmm. Is, is that require a lot of equipment? What all? You do a lot of this well, yourself, don't you? You can do it as easy as uh, just with a backhoe or with a little mini hoe. Right. Yep. Um, you know, 150 years ago, all of our forefathers did it with a shovel and a spade. Uh-huh. Now, I don't expect uh, you, me, and Brad to go out there and start digging. Do you want to but, come to uh, Missouri and we could do that on Brad's little 200? <laughs> <laughs> I won't be there that day. I, I, I no, think maybe uh, Brian could do a you know, we, demo like that. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a digging yeah. demo. Uh-huh. Now, uh, you know, it can be done as, as, as cheap as a, uh, as a small trencher. Um, I have a friend, and he's put in a, a good amount of tile for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to say that his trencher cost him about $3,500. Okay. Brian, can you hang on a minute? We're going to come right yes, back. We've got to take a little break here right now, and we'll be right back with more Bull Sessions on 680 KFEQ. 